So here's a question for you. What is the maximum speed at which a car can safely round a turn of radius 90 meters if the coefficient of static friction is 0.75? So let's say a car is making a circular turn. I'm going to draw a box to represent the car. So it's going in that direction. How can we calculate the coefficient of static friction that allows it to make the turn. Now what you need to understand is that static friction is directed this way. Whenever a car makes a circular turn, static friction between the road and the tires allows it to make the turn. So static friction provides the centripetal force. So the net force in the x direction for this problem is equal to the static frictional force. That's the only other force acting in that direction. And we know that the net force is mass times acceleration. So it's just ma. And the static frictional force is mu s times the normal force. Now the acceleration in the x direction or towards the center of the circle is the centripetal acceleration, which is v squared divided by r. The normal force on a horizontal flat surface is sim simply equal to the weight of the object, which is mg. So in this problem, we can cancel the mass. The maximum speed of the car does not depend on the mass. So what we have left over is v squared divided by r which is equal to mu s times g. So let's multiply both sides by r. So what we have now is v squared is equal to mu s times g times r. And now let's take the square root of both sides. So the maximum speed that the car can safely make the turn is equal to the square root of mu s times rg. So that's 0.75 times the radius, which is 90, times the gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. So the answer is about 25.7 meters per second. And so that's how you could find the maximum speed that a vehicle can safely make a certain turn, given the coefficient of static friction. Here's another one. Number two, calculate the coefficient of static friction if a car can round a turn of radius 70 meters at a speed of 24 meters per second. So based on the last problem, go ahead and try this one. So just like before, we know that the net force, okay, I'm not sure what just happened. Let's do that again. The net force is equal to the static frictional force. And this is gonna be MA, that's equal to mu s times the normal force and A is the centripetal acceleration, so that's uh, V squared over R, and the normal force is just mg. Now this time we're looking for mu s, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over g. It's so on the right, g is going to cancel. So V squared divided by Rg is equal to the coefficient of static friction. So this is the formula that we need in this problem. So mu s is going to be 24 squared divided by the radius of 70 times 9.8. 24 squared is 576. 
70 times 9.8 is 686. So dividing these two numbers, you should get 0.84 if you round it to the nearest hundredth place. And so that's the coefficient of static friction that will allow the car to make a turn of radius 70 meters at this speed. And so that's it for this problem. So here's another problem that we could try. A rotor ride has a radius of 8 meters and rotates at a speed of 25 RPMs. What is the minimum coefficient of static friction that will prevent people from slipping down when the floor drops out? So let's draw a picture. And a typical roto ride looks like a, a cylinder. And let's draw a person. Now, as the ride spins and as the floor drops out, the person, if he's moving fast enough, will not fall down. Now, how does that work? Well, the person wants to fly out this way. But instead, based on the curvature of the room as it rotates, it forces him to turn in a circle. So therefore, the wall exerts a normal force on a person. The person feels like he's being pressed against the wall. But his inertia wants him to keep going forward, but based on the curvature of the wall as it spins, it forces him to turn into a circle. So the wall exerts a normal force in this direction. The person's weight force wants to bring him down. And static friction prevents him from sliding down. Now, as you increase the speed, the normal force increases, which in turn increases the static frictional force, which supports the weight of the person. So there's a minimum speed at which this rotor ride has to spin at in order to support the weight of the person. Our goal is to find the minimum coefficient of static friction. So we need just enough frictional force to support the weight. So we're going to set those two equal to each other. So Fs is equal to mg. Now static friction is equal to mu s times the normal force. So how can we calculate the normal force? Notice that the normal force points towards the center of the circle. So therefore, the normal force provides the centripetal force. It keeps the person moving in circular motion. So we can say that the normal force is equal to the centripetal force. And therefore, the normal force is mv squared over r. So now we have mu s times mv squared over r is equal to mg. So now we could cancel m. So mu s is independent of the mass. So we have mu s v squared over r equals g. Now, to get mu s by itself, let's multiply both sides by r over v squared. On the left side, we can cancel v squared, and we can cancel r. So mu s in this problem is equal to rg over v squared. Now, we have r, we know what g is. The only thing we're missing is the speed in meters per second. We have it in RPMs, that is revolutions per minute. So let's just get rid of some stuff first. And I'm just going to rewrite this equation on top so I have more working space. So how can we convert RPMs into meters per second? I'm going to do it two ways. The first is to find a frequency in a period. So what we have is 25 revolutions per minute. So that means that there's 25 revolutions for every 60 seconds. 
because 1 minute equals 60 seconds. Now if you want to find a frequency, it's basically equal to the number of cycles divided by the time. So there's 25 cycles or 25 revolutions that occur in a time of 60 seconds. So this is equal to 0.4167 revolutions per second, or cycles per second. Now the period is 1 over f, 1 over the frequency. So it's 1 over 0.4167, or 60 over 25. So you should get 2.4 seconds for the period. Now the speed is 2 pi r divided by the period. It's distance over time, and the distance around a circle is the circumference of a circle. So if you want to derive this equation, you can start from this equation. So we know that d is equal to vt when an object is moving with constant speed. So v is d divided by t. The distance of a circle, as we said before, is the circumference of a circle, which is 2 pi r. And the time it takes to travel around a circle is known as a period. So v is equal to 2 pi r over t. So that's how you can get that equation, if you're wondering. So now once we have it, we can now find a speed. So it's 2 pi times a radius of 8 meters divided by a period of 2.4 seconds. So that's going to be 20 0.94 meters per second, which I'm going to write at the top. So now what's another way in which we can convert RPMs directly into meters per second? So if you want to use a conversion process, here's what you could do. So this is how you convert linear speed, or rather angular speed, into linear speed. This is linear speed. Angular speed is like RPMs, revolutions per second, radians per minute, and things like that. Angular speed tells you how fast you're spinning. Linear speed tells you how fast you're moving forward. So we're going to start with 25 revolutions per minute. And one minute is equal to 60 seconds, because we need to get meters per second. So the unit minutes cancel. Now, one revolution around a circle is equal to 2 pi radians, which is 360 degrees. Now the radius of the circle is 8 meters. So that means that one radian has a length of 8 meters. So now the unit's revolutions cancel, and the unit's radians cancel. So now what we have left over is meters per second. So let's get the answer. It's 25 divided by 60 times 2 pi times 8. And that will give you the same answer of 20.94. Now that we have the speed, let's calculate the coefficient of static friction. So let's get the final answer. So mu s is equal to the radius of 8 meters times the gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared divided by the speed which is 20.94 meters per second and we need to square that as well. So I got 0.179 for the coefficient of static friction. So that's the minimum amount that we need so when that the floor drops out, the people won't slide down. They're going to stay where they are. Static friction is going to support their weight.